tonight in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's back to the future for the USF Bulls as one of the Bulls' familiar foes from its earliest days as a football program as the opponent tonight. It's USF and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers right now. Welcome you inside L.T. Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We're about an hour north of Nashville, Tennessee on Interstate 65. Tonight for college football, Jim Levitt brings his USF Bulls in to meet the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Very pleasant. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Weekly. Happy to be alongside John Gregory for this one. Well, John, USF is trying to go 2-0 and on the young season following their impressive season-opening win last week against the Wofford Terriers. Matt Grothy set a single-game passing completion percentage record, but in tonight's game against the Toppers, he won't have his top target from last year. No, Jesse Hester, a guy that's been working number one all week with the number one unit, will not be here. Hamstring injury is going to prevent him from helping out this team tonight, but Matt Grothy, a guy with 40 career starts, has all the experience in the world. And Coach Levitt says he's had the best and most focused fall camp he's ever seen him have, and that's 83% from last week, and that shows that he's had that focused camp, but he wants to score a lot of points early and often tonight. He played well last week. On defense for USF, the senior defensive end, George Selby, is the active leader in the nation in tackles for loss. you got to find him every snap. Yeah, he's a very active player. He's going to be in the backfield this week, facing a more traditional office, offense in uh, Western Kentucky, so this is a guy that's going to, you're going to see him in the backfield all today. He wants to change the history. He's a history buff, and he wants to win the Big East this year and change things from the past. Here in Western Kentucky, it's a blackout weekend. Western Kentucky is going to wear black jerseys for this game tonight. First time in school history. The fans are all decked out in black. They're looking for a big night. Thomas Majors is one of the key linebackers for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. He's got to have a big game if the toppers want to hang in with the powerful Bulls of USF from the Big East. Back with a kickoff and more in a moment. Sun is going down here in Bowling Green, Tucky, and we are nearly ready for college football. The captains for this game are on the center of the field. This is a big emotional game, John Gregory. One of the biggest opponents to ever come to Western Kentucky for a game. They're jacked up. They are, and this is an important game for the fans here. They, they were expecting a very successful night from this team after a tough week last week, but this South Florida Bull, they need to control the line if you look at the keys of this ball game. They got to They've got a veteran front defensively and offensively, and if they can control that up front, they're going to be successful, and they want to force turnovers. One of the things they want to do is get better. Last year, they were 98th in the country. This year, they want to get a little bit better. That started last week. For Western Kentucky, on the other hand, they need to have a quick start tonight, and that means getting on the board early, let something good happen to them. They're a very young team, and to do that, they'll start to believe in each other if something positive happens. So look for a quick start for Western Kentucky tonight if they're going to be successful. Down on the sidelines, David Elson, now in his seventh season as the head coach. He was an assistant coach before that, and he has just completed a two-year transition program here at Western Kentucky. They are a full-fledged member of the Sun Belt Conference, and they are bowl eligible. They're, in fact, team number 120 in the FBS. USF will get a chance to get the football first. And speaking of Coach Ellison from Western Kentucky, John, how difficult is it going to be for Western Kentucky to put that thumping they took in Knoxville in their rearview mirror? 63-7 to last week, a game in which they gave up 388 ground yards. Yeah, but believe it or not, I think it's actually a little bit easier to do unless you – even compared to losing a close ball game. So I think they'll put that out of their mind tonight. It's a big ball game for them at home. Jim Levitt. In the midst of his 13th season, he is the one and only coach of the program at the University of South Florida. He is a St. Petersburg native. Dontavia Bogut back to receive the kick for USF. Casey Tynus set to kick off. That's a perfect night for football here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Glad you could join us. And from the five-yard line. First wave across the 30 and dragged down up at the 42-yard line. That's an outstanding return by Bogan, and, and flags are down. This may be a face mask penalty against Western Kentucky. Pat Garvey is our referee tonight. This is a Sun Belt Conference crew. 
So a big play on special teams to get this one underway for the Bulls tonight. Here's the call. During the return, personal foul, face mask, on the kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. So Matt Grothy and the USF offense will take their first snap inside Hilltopper territory. Here's another look. Take a look at his head, see if it goes down. That'll give us a good indication if he got a hold of it. Looks like he actually grabbed the back of it, and right there, he was as he was on the ground, it almost looked like he was wrestling a little bit. Trent Calhoun whistled on the face mask penalty. There's Grothy's outstanding numbers from last week. And here's Mo Plancher. Plancher on the first carry. Rips off a gain of 13 yards for a first down. Mo Plancher had two touchdowns last week. And there's been a lot of conjecture this week amongst the impact players for USF. Carlton Mitchell had six catches last week. Mo Plancher, two touchdowns. Dontavia Bogan off to a good start. It's been 16 games since the Bulls have had a 100-yard rusher. They think they've got an outstanding shot to have one tonight. Plancher again. This time, not as much running over the middle of the lineup. And you can see the starting lineups scrolling atop the scorebook at the top of your screen. Offensive line for USF tonight, same as last week on the left side. Jeremiah Warren, Chaz Hine, Samson Genus at center. On the right side, Zach Herman and Jake Sims. We may see more of Mark Popek tonight at the right tackle spot. Officially no gain on the play, second and ten. Play action this time for Grothy, and he hits a soft spot right in the middle of the defensive secondary, and the pass is complete. The pass is caught by Patrick Richardson and the sophomore from Pensacola with his first catch of the year. Now you can see across the top of your screen the defense for Western Kentucky. You can see in the down three, they play a shade 50 defense. You've got two Orlando natives, the left end, Kenny Martin, and the nose tackle, Jamarcus Allen. Empty set for Grothy. Four wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Now Blanchard comes in motion. Grothy back to pass, swing pass out of the backfield. Nowhere to go. Blanchard, and he's wrapped up, and it's fourth down. And it's going to be decision time for Jim Levitt. Nice play defensively by this Western Kentucky defensive unit as Torian Smith goes out there. It's man-to-man -man coverage here, and you see he's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. He's got to pick them, him up and make an open field tackle and does a nice job of preventing Plancher from picking up that first down. Delbert Alvarado, the senior from Tampa, is on to attempt a 40-yard field goal. He's wearing number 10, the Keeley Dorsey number. Evan Landy is the holder. Snap is good. The kick is on the way, and the kick is no good. Wide to the left. So the Hilltopper defense holds on a drive that started in Western Kentucky territory. We'll step away from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and the Hilltoppers from the Sun Belt Conference will have the football when we return. No score, just underway. Now you can see frustration on the face of Jim Levitt. Bulls took the opening kickoff, moved deep into Western Kentucky territory, but misfire on a 40-yard field goal attempt by Delbert Alvarado. Brandon Smith, the senior from Danville, Kentucky, is the quarterback for Western Kentucky. And on first down, little swing pass. Pass is complete up to the 25-yard line. Jake Gabler. And you can see Gabler on the far right-hand portion of your screen. One of the impact players tonight, Tyrell Hayden and Quinterrence Cooper. And Cooper is a junior from St. Augustine, Florida. There are a host of Florida natives on this Western Kentucky roster. Western Kentucky offense now scrolling across the top of your screen. Empty set five wide this time. And able to get back near the line of scrimmage is Smith and David Bedford, the junior from Palm Beach, Florida, who got the start tonight 
with the heavy pressure. A lot of pressure. George Selvey, as we mentioned on the top, he's the guy that came off the right side, and you'll see him line up at that right defensive end and attack all night from there. They've got great defensive ends, and Jason Pierre-Paul, a guy that we'll talk about as well, but Selvey always comes from that right side. Yeah, Selvey won't move around much. He'll always line up on the right side. Third and eight from the gun. Smith, and it's batted down. Batted down. And Kay Von Webster, the freshman, who was really bothered by the flu last week, firing through and knocking this thing down. You can see him switch on the outside. Selby, a guy that we talk about, rushes. That time he dropped in the coverage, and he had the flat coverage out there, and they switched it up, and Kayvon Webster comes in and knocks it down. So this Bulls team are going to do a lot of things defensively to mix it up for this quarterback that doesn't have a lot of experience for Western Kentucky. Jeremy Moore, so busy last week at Tennessee, had nine punts in that game. Flag is down. Theo Wilson back to receive the kick for USF. Ball's loose. And it's recovered by the toppers at the 20-yard line, but we'll have to check the flag. No fair catch from Wilson. The ball came loose. Darius Bauman. Checking Mike Gothard on the recovery. Mike Gothard. Illegal formation. Kicking team. Number eight. He lines up in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Seth Tammy is called on the foul, and USF dodges a huge bullet there. You don't want to get this big crowd emotionally involved in this game early yeah. if you're USF. You can see here, they said too many men in the backfield here and have to have enough guys in a line of scrimmage. Tough to see, but, you know, the one thing we talked about, one of the keys for this Western Kentucky team tonight is have something positive happen early. There was something positive that was taken away from them by just a minor mistake that they're making. So they've got to just relax out here. If they're going to compete in this ballgame against this strong South Florida Bulls team, they're going to have to change the way they're doing things and not make those little mistakes. So Moore, the senior from Indianapolis, set to punt it away again. And Theo Wilson, a huge sigh of relief. Shorter kick this time. Wilson will get away from it. And there were bulls around the football, and it's going to go to the West, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers as it went off a USF bull. Blake Ayers, the recovery. Let's see if we can pick it up. You can see it here. Actually hit off of the Bulls defender there, and twice this Hilltopper team gets a breakdown here as you can usually see the punt returner waving off his blockers in that situation, letting them know, you know, and Peter, Peter, that the punt is short, and usually the defensive players get away from it. That time he didn't hear it. was blocked into him, actually. And Western Kentucky comes up with the ball. Another big opportunity for this team. That ball appeared to go off George Baker, and it was recovered by Western Kentucky. Big break for the toppers. So the black-clad offense of Western Kentucky back on the field. Timeout. First Kentucky, first charge timeout. So David Elson had something he did not like, and that offensive formation. By the way, the offensive coordinator for Western Kentucky is Walter Wells. He's in his first year. They've kind of gone away, John, from the, the spread Rich Rodriguez offense of the last few years. Now they're they're a little bit more conventional and they're using their tight end a little bit more. We'll take a timeout from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Come back with more USF, their first defensive challenge of the night when we return. Well, the USF defense forced Western Kentucky into a three and out. But now, following the fumble on the punt, the Hilltoppers will start this drive from the South Florida 34. Rolling out, flag is down, and the quarterback is down. That was big Terrell McLean coming from the backside. Holding offense from 78. Penalty will be declined. Second down. 
Right now, USF's front wall is having their way with the offensive line of Western Kentucky. And that was one of the keys we talked about for this South Florida Bulls team is if they can control the line of scrimmage, and they've been doing that back in this Western Kentucky University team back, and you know they cannot make these mistakes if they're going to put any points on the board. This is a very aggressive Bulls defense. Good look at Brandon Smith. Finally getting the chance to start now in his fifth year in this program. And we've got another whistle. And this may go against Western Kentucky as well. Full start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's the left tackle of Wes Jeffries. John Gregory, this Western Kentucky football team is just waiting for something good to happen. Uh, they did not force Tennessee to punt the ball one time last week in a lopsided loss. They never had the lead. No, but sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, what, what have I done to help that? This team is really shooting herself in the foot this early in this ball game, and they've got to change their ways. Second and 20. Smith passes complete up to the 35-yard line. And that's Dustin Boyer. And Webster with a stop. And you can see Brandon Smith has a nice arm. He delivers this ball to the outside, picks up some manageable yards here to put him in a third and 11 situation. But you want to try to keep these bulls off guard by being able to run it, but they keep backing their cells up, and they just haven't put themselves in that situation. And this Bulls team knows they have to throw the football. And they shift out of the pistol formation. Corner blitz coming. Smith picks it up, and he's going to try to run across the... 25, and he's got the first down. Bulls could not contain the quarterback, and he takes it down to the 22-yard line, a 14-yard run, an improvisation by Smith. Watch Smith move his feet here. He sees the rush, makes it to the outside, and the Bulls that time sent some guys. So once you have man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, it becomes one-on-one. -on -one. He has some pretty good speed. As you can see, Smith gets up there and makes a big play for this Hilltopper team. Raymond had a shot, but couldn't bring him down. And the drive stays alive. Swing pass, caught, across the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Quentin Washington and Jerome Murphy combined to make the tackle, but not before it's a six-yard game. You see what Walt Wells is doing here, trying to move the ball to the outside, not trying to take the time to throw it up the field because of the aggressive rush on this Bulls team. So they're moving the ball in wide side of the field to the short side of the field and trying to keep the Bulls off balance that way. Western Kentucky has yet to run a designed running play tonight. Option, try to reverse. Beautiful cutback down to the 11-yard line, and it's another first down. And that was a very, very quick run by Gabler. Gabler had nothing coming back the other way and cut it inside. He had nothing because Selby comes off the ball so fast on the right defensive end side. That was supposed to be a reverse, actually, and he just cut it up inside. Selby was on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage by the time he even got that ball. Great run on his part. That was the only place he had to go. Well, Western Kentucky, when they got near the goal line one time, Against the Vols last week, they cashed it in. First and 10 from just outside the 10. Smith, drag down. And a, we'll see if that's going to be ruled as a sack or an incomplete pass. Jason Pierre-Paul, the junior from Deerfield Beach. And that is going to go as an incomplete pass. Brandon Smith getting that ball out, but there's a good look at Jason Pierre-Paul. We'll mention his name a lot, I think, and probably will all year long. You could see him bookend defensive ends for this South Ooh. Florida Bulls team. As you could see, he's bigger than Selby on that side, but they say he's just about as quick. Eighth play of the drive. Inside the 10, down to the 5. Flag is thrown. This one may be coming back for holding. First carry for Tyrell Hayden, the senior from Lexington, Kentucky. Well, when we spoke with Coach Elson, we were see what the call is here. Holding offense number 16.
10 yard penalty. Still second down. Well, this is a team that had 74 penalty yards last week at Tennessee. And you just can't continue to make those kinds of errors against a superior athletic team. No, and you can see the frustration on Coach Elson, Elson's face right there is he's trying to encourage his team, but yet you want to get on them a little bit, but they're an awfully young team. You just wonder how they're going to react to all that. Second and 16. Western Kentucky needs to go to the one to get a first down. Sudden a little flanker screen. One broken tackle, then another. Stretching that ball out to the eight-yard line, and maybe, yes, late hit coming in, and that's going to go against Western Kentucky. A late block out of bounds, and that's another silly penalty by the Hilltoppers. After the play was over, personal foul, offense, unnecessary roughness, number 77. 15-yard penalty. And a second early penalty against the left tackle, Wes Jeffries. Let's see if we can take a look here. A late block outside. He's clearly down here, and Jeffries, again, the second mistake he had. Nine starts in his career, and you think you know a little bit more on that. That was completely late, unnecessary, and you can see the frustration again on their head coach. And he just plowed into the back of Nate Allen. That was an easy penalty to call. 49 yards early in this ballgame, and penalties already for this Hilltopper team. Third and 22. Smith with a good pocket this time. Incomplete. The pass was intended for Quinterrence Cooper. And now it's fourth down, and the field goal unit is coming on. Casey Tynus, the sophomore from Bowling Green, no field goal attempts last week in Knoxville against the Vols. This will be a 40-yard attempt. It'll come from the right hash. Chris Young is the snapper. The punter, Jeremy Moore, is the holder. On the way, and good. So despite all the penalties, Western Kentucky is able to cash that turnover in, and they turn it into three points. And for the first time all season, Western Kentucky finds themselves in front. Western Kentucky with a 3-0 lead. The drive, eight plays, 11 yards. Four and a half minutes came off the clock, and it culminated with a 40-yard field goal. There's a look at LT Smith Stadium. $50 million in improvements. The majority of the improvements were actually in place last year, but this is the first game on their new $850,000 field turf. This turf, no crown in the middle of this field, was down in time for spring football. We have got a tour of this facility yesterday, John, and these facilities here at Western Kentucky are amongst the best in the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah, and Coach, Coach Elson says, Come and see it. That's what he wants people to do. He wants you to visit here and check it out. 10,000 square foot weight room and locker room. And speaking of that brand new turf, Bogan slips down as he reaches the 17 yard line. So the Bulls find themselves behind for the first time all year. Eight plays, <laughs> but it covered just 11 yards. That, that's not a misprint. Seemed more like 50 yards, yeah. 60 yards with all the penalties they had to overcome. From the 17. Going to keep that on the ground across the 20. And up to the 23-yard line goes Mo Plancher. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky tonight for college football. We appreciate the fact you're tuning in to see this game under the lights. The sun just down now, about an hour north of Nashville. I'm Dave Weekly along with John Gregory. Western Kentucky in their dark uniforms, black jerseys for the first time ever. USF in their road whites. Berkey with a nice fake. And he is chased out of bounds up at the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and three. And you can see the, the defense of 
unit. Three down linemen for Western Kentucky is scrolling at the top of your screen. Tarian Smith, the senior from Perry, Georgia, on the stop. Well, Grothy, according to Mike Canales, the offensive coordinator for USF, called 10 audibles last week and checked into the right formation seven times. Straight hand off to Plancher. And Plancher's second effort may have got him the first down up at the 29-yard line. A flag is down. And this one may go against the Bulls. And probably a lot of relief. Legal formation, offense, more than four men in the offensive backfield. Five-yard penalty, third down. And one of the things, point of emphasis this year is making sure there are enough people on the line of scrimmage, not too many guys in the backfield. And it's being called all over college football this year and how important that has been so far in this game tonight. Well, now, instead of third and short, it's third and seven. Flags again. As the Bulls show four wide receivers, two to each side. It's 12. Legal substitution. Defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. So Western Kentucky now with in the first 10 minutes of this game up to 54 penalty yards. I believe Western Kentucky University had 12 men on the field that time and you can see the defensive coaches going crazy. So just a little bit off here. There. Got to calm down and try to just play with the South Florida team. Bulls show the same formation. Protection is excellent for Grothy, and the pass is caught. Up to the 31-yard line and a first down. Carlton Mitchell. Mitchell was so big in the first quarter last week in the win over Wofford. And many of those audibles that Grothy checked into passes to Mitchell. Especially in the first half. He had six Wofford. catches last week. Yeah, and Wofford playing back gave him the opportunity to throw underneath, and he kept checking down to Mitchell, and he made some nice plays. The junior from Lutz. First and ten for the Bulls. Then Busby's in the line for tight end. Another flag, and a pass is dropped. That pass was intended for A.J. Love, the junior from Bradenton. And this time the Bulls were backing up in legal motion as Dontavia Bogan on the outside moved up on the line of scrimmage and was told to back up by the outside receiver. And again, motion or procedure on the Bulls this time. Illegal shift, offense, two men moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty, first down. John, is it my imagination, have we had more plays with penalties called uh, than, uh, than... I don't think it's your imagination. Okay, all right. <laughs> no, I'm with you on that. There's, uh, It's been a little sloppy from the beginning of this ball game, so... There's a penalty yards. Trips to the bottom this time for the Bulls. Grossi, quarterback keeper, 30, up to the 36-yard line. So Grothy, who's been the leading rusher for USF the last three years, steps up on a designed quarterback keeper. By the way, we're going to see, or we anticipate that we'll see a lot of B.J. Daniels tonight, also a quarterback. Daniels didn't get into the game until the third quarter last week when it was 23-7. USF's coaches would like to get Daniels into the game in the first half tonight if they can. Second and five. It's Plancher. And Plancher rips off about a nine-yard gainer, and it's a first down for USF. Mike Canal is talking about Mo Plancher, you know, his success in running the football and how strong he is for a guy that's five foot nine also gives him great kudos in protection. He's a guy that can help Grothy back there in the backfield and protecting these guys on the outside. He doesn't want them blocking the defensive ends, but he's a good blocker in the backfield when it comes to protecting growth. Early going, USF averaging more than seven yards an attempt on first down. First carry tonight for the freshman, Lindsey Lamar from Hillsborough High School in Tampa. 
And he is one step away from taking it to the house every time he touches the football. Great story this week in the St. Pete Times talking about how he runs stronger than his 160-pound frame looks. Mike Canales says he's 160 with rocks in his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Second and six. Lamar again, and he is whacked down, but not until he gets into Hilltopper territory near the 47-yard line of Western Kentucky. Lamar's ability to just accelerate through the hole is a guy that's just a kind of a slicing back. As you watch him come through here, he doesn't need a big hole. He's a small guy at 160 pounds, but you see, not afraid to take it up inside with the big guys, and boy, he can change directions on a dime. Guess what? Another penalty, this time against the Bulls. Illegal substitution. And we'll start winding the clock again. Despite all the penalties, this has really been a very quickly played first quarter. We're closing in on 90 seconds to go. Western Kentucky has a 3-0 lead. Normally talk about players icing down after the game. These referees may have to ice the shoulders down, <laughs> throwing all these flags. Four wide again for the Bulls, and Matt Grothy doesn't like it, and he's going to call a timeout. So the Bulls burn their first of three timeouts here in the first half. Hey, Big East and SEC fans, don't miss the third annual SEC Big East Invitation will be held at Madison Square Garden in New York on December 9th and at the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa on the 10th. Two-night men's college basketball event begins with a doubleheader in New York City when Georgia faces St. John's, followed by a battle between Kentucky and UConn. The following night's doubleheader in Tampa will feature DePaul and Mississippi State, followed by a basketball powerhouse showdown between Syracuse and Florida. Tickets are on sale now in Tampa. Visit the official website, secbigeastinvitational.com, for more details. Yeah, Big East men's basketball conference schedule came out earlier this week. Doug Woolard, the AD at USF, is going to join us for a little visit at halftime. We'll talk a little bit about that and other things going on at USF. That will be coming up at the half. Second time in the early going that USF has been penalized on third down and had that's happened twice on this drive already after the timeout. Brophy passes Carr. Mitchell, 30, 20, race to the end zone, five, stretches it out. And he is going to be ruled out of bounds, just shy of the pylon at the two-yard line. Carlton Mitchell with a big play for the Bulls. And a big play and credit the offensive line in the blocking here. As you can see, Western Kentucky sends a lot of guys here, and it takes time for a crossing route like that as Carlton Mitchell comes across wide open. Very difficult for a defensive back to stay on a guy that long, and you have to give a lot of credit to the front on that time for giving Grothy that much protection, that much time. That's a 50-yard connection, Grothy to Carlton Mitchell. Oh, he wanted that touchdown, trying to stretch it out there at the end. So the Bulls with a golden opportunity to take the lead right before the end of the period. Blancher over the top. Touchdown, USF. So Mo Plancher into the end zone. That's his third touchdown of the early season. Yeah, Mo Plancher, a guy you get it close to the goal line. He led this team last year with six touchdowns. He was third in rushing on the team, but finds a way to get it in the end zone. And anytime it gets close to that goal line, you can look for Plancher to try to take it over the top. Alvarado on to add the extra point. Look at all the fans on the bank. It's up and good. And the Bulls take the lead. So Mo Plancher up over the top, finishes a drive. The big play, obviously, the 50-yard connection between 
Grothy and Carlton Mitchell. So Dave, one of the things you mentioned earlier was try to find some positives. Or how do you, how do you remain positive after what happened last week for Western Kentucky University? Well, they played a very good first and third quarter. Well, tonight it's been a pretty good first quarter as far as execution goes. Now they've made mistakes and have a lot of things have been called back for this team, but they've executed well. That time they get caught up in a man situation where they blitz a lot of guys, and South Florida Bulls get a big play off of that. But so far, I think they would be happy with where it is. Oh. Now, Mo Plancher getting the start again tonight. Mike Ford is sitting out the second of his two-game suspension. He'll be back in time for next week's game at Raymond James Stadium against Charleston Southern. And Jamar Taylor, we are not sure when he may be back. He may be out up to two months. But Plancher has really played well. And they talk about Ford. He's going to have to earn that spot back. That's one of the things they've said. Just because you know, you're coming back, you know, we've got some guys playing pretty well. And you've got to earn that spot for this University of South Florida Bulls team. Bobby Rainey and Marvell Booker back to receive the kick for Western Kentucky. High short kick. That may have been going out of bounds. Rainey picked it up. Across the 20, still on his feet, 30 to the 34. So Bobby Rainey, the sophomore from Griffin, Georgia, on the good return. So Jim Levitt and the Bulls find themselves in front now as we close in on the end of the opening period of play. This is the first, this, this series with Western Kentucky is the first of a home and home. The Hilltoppers will come to Tampa next year. Smith going under center this time. Go. Absolutely nowhere to go. Chris Robinson leading the charge for the Bulls. Trying to run over the left side. We've mentioned Wes Jeffries, the left tackle's name a few times. Trying to get on the outside there. But again, as you mentioned, Chris Robinson's speed on the outside. This guy's a senior. Kind of his last hurrah as well. And, you know, a guy with a ton of experience. He played in all 12 games last year. Worked at both defensive end and linebacker. A guy that can drop into coverage. They've got very few guys that can play. They've got a lot of guys that can play defensive end and linebacker and being able to drop in that coverage and that's that makes your team very good defensively. Well the first quarter tonight's had a lot of penalties a lot of turnovers and one touchdown. USF's got it. They've got the lead. Bucky, there's Big Red. One of the most recognizable college mascots in the country. And guess what? The flags are down. So we're continuing a trend from the first quarter. Well, this Hilltopper offense can't help but shoot themselves in the foot right now. And you know, you're putting yourself in those second. Start. Offense, number 76, five-yard penalty, second down. That's Adam Smith, the right guard, a redshirt freshman from Murfreesboro. Well, you don't want to face this Bulls team as hard as they come off the edge is rushing, knowing that you're going to have to throw the ball throw the ball in this situation again the second down and 17 it's going to be difficult we're going to come after it. second and 17 Smith, and he is dragged down from behind dragged down from behind david bedford who's been really active here early and Bedford, another guy that can work inside, play defensive tackle or defensive end, and another former JUCO All-American. Guys, just keep running off the sideline for this Bulls team that are JUCO All-Americans or guys that are going to be All-Americans one of these days. He's a top 10 JUCO prospect, and he is making the most of his first career start tonight. And timeout, Western Kentucky. So the Hilltoppers now with just one timeout for the remainder of the first half. Dave, we start. All right, we'll take a break. 14-20 to go until halftime. USF's got the lead, and they are dominating the line of scrimmage. 
Montero Murphy for USF playing a big role tonight. He can play on the corners. He can play at the safety position. And he's going to do a little bit of both tonight with Jarrell Young out. Broke his arm last week in the win over Wofford. And that's a keeper by Brandon Smith. Smith takes it up to the 30-yard line. Craig Marshall on the stop. Western Kentucky is going to have to punt the football away. Not an easy thing to do from a quarterback standpoint. You know you have to pick up 20 yards, and yes, you can get by that defensive front, but once you do, everybody's going to collapse on you. You know they're coming after you, and you know, good time to just slide and get what you can and punt the ball away. Well, a turnover led to Western Kentucky's only score to this point. Relatively short kick. And a fair catch is called for at the 36-yard line. That was Chris Lane back to receive that punt. So at least for the moment, Theo Wilson was not back on that punt for USF. And you see Murphy and Jim Levitt talking things over. When we asked him earlier this week about using Murphy at those spots, Jim Lovett said he didn't care. He's, he's able to do both those things. Long ball by Grothy. Incomplete and nearly intercepted. Pass intended for A.J. Love. It looked like Matt Grothy was a little late delivering that football. Yeah, he had plenty of time. He was looking to the outside. I think he wanted to get it up the sidelines and caught him coming across as he's you know, as a quarterback, sometimes receivers just come into your vision and it looked like he caught him a little bit late and had an opportunity if he would have gotten that ball, as you said, Dave, a little bit earlier. Grothy off to a good start tonight, completed his first four passes, including that 50-yarder to Carlton Mitchell. That was his first incompletion of the night. Second and ten. Again, the protection is good. Grothy with all day to throw. Finally. Tries to find Love again, and Love reaches out with the left hand and just can't quite pull it, pull it in. A.J. Love still trying to get over that knee injury he suffered in the St. Pete Bowl, looking more and more like the receiver we all know. And look at the protection there. Got a roughing the passer call, but nice job by A.J. Love there trying to get himself in a position to catch that. Just stuck that left hand out, as you mentioned, but, boy, he did a nice job of finding an opening there as he came back to the quarterback, and he was not open, and he just turned up the field there, was able to find an opening, and, boy, they just missed a big play. Roughing the passer penalty. Roughing Grothy was Ramel Lewis, redshirt freshman from Grayson, Georgia. So it's a first down at the 49-yard line of Western Kentucky. So Grothy is now split out, and B.J. Daniels is in to run the offense. And it's a keeper, and you know what he can do with a football. B.J. Daniels takes it down to the 43-yard line. What do you think about all the numbers he put up at Lincoln High School in Tallahassee? When he was a senior, he produced 46 touchdowns, 34 touchdown passes, and he ran for a dozen more scores. Yeah, two-sport athlete, great athlete, and a guy that Matt Grothy knows needs to get some time as Grothy's here as a senior, so trying to get Daniel some work. So I think that's the closest thing USF has to a Wildcat formation. Lindsey Lamar. He's got the first down, takes it down to the 37-yard line. So when Western Kentucky goes into a Wildcat, they call it their topper formation. But boy, you know, when you've got B.J. Daniels and Lindsey Lamar and some of these wide receivers, USF has speed to burn on the football field. Speed all over that offense and the defensive side. They are loaded with speed on that South Florida team. Toppers fake the blitz. Here's Grothy audible, calling the audible. And the blitz is coming. Grothy reads it, and he's able to connect with A.J. Love for a short gainer to the 32. We asked Mike Canales, the offensive coordinator, earlier this week, John, about 
throwing the football down the field against Wofford. They really didn't do that. USF was trying to force Wofford out of their two deep zone. They were never able to do it. So Grothy really piled up the yards with high percentage passes, but nothing really vertically. Yeah, 83%. They'd like to go a little bit deeper. They thought this Hilltopper team would come after them a little bit more than create that opportunity to go up top. Second and five. Busby in motion. Grothy on the keeper. And it's defensed well by Western Kentucky. Nice play defensively up here for Western. You got to hold your position there, and the Hilltoppers do a nice job of there putting this Bulls team in third and three situation. But boys, very tough to play against Grothy, a guy that can really pull the ball out, get to the outside, but he's one of those strong quarterbacks, too, that can pick up two or three yards inside if he needs to. LJ Harbison with the stop for the Toppers. Third down and three. Grothy, pass is caught. And that is going to be a catch. And it's the freshman coming in there to make that catch. And coming off the field is Evan Landy. Nice protection as he gets this, throws it behind it, reaches out there, and it looks like Landy comes up with a right shoulder as he comes off the field there. And he's a guy with a lot of talent, Dave. Now they're looking at that right shoulder. He's a left-handed quarterback, however. He had an early catch against Wofford last week. So they're looking at him on the bench. Bulls without Jesse Hester, of course, tonight. Flag is down. And Lindsey Lamar. And another late flag comes in. As they pull the marker down. Boys, this is two separate penalties. As you mentioned the late flag, and again, the frustration on Coach Elson's face there. He just cannot get his players to settle down and not make those penalties. So we'll see if these penalties offset. There are two fouls on the play. Holding. Offense, number 62, a penalty will be enforced. After the play was over, personal foul, defense, and 16, that penalty will be enforced after the holding, first down. So Samson Genus, the center, is called for the hold. And then another personal foul here in the first half against Western Kentucky. And that's, you know, th those are the big penalties, too. You've seen that many times tonight against this Hilltopper team. You're looking at 15 yards time after time, and you just can't afford to give that to a Big East team that you're playing against, a team that as big and fast and as talented as this Bulls team. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky for college football tonight. I'm Dave Weekly along with John Gregory. Matt Grothy slips one tackle, takes it inside the 10, out of bounds. It's going to be first and goal for the Bulls. Second outstanding run of the first half for Matt Grothy. He doesn't really look that fast, but he, he's bigger than you think and faster than you think. Well, you can see the size of his arms right there. He's a guy that's not afraid to get into the weight room, but again, a quarterback draw all the way and great blocking down the field. As you can see, the offensive lineman, Samson Genus, gets down the field and cut blocks these linebackers, and that just creates a huge opportunity for Grothy to get to the outside. You can see Grothy just ran away from Tari and Smith. First and goal. Check it, Grothy on the you, keeper. You, you. Grothy on the keeper down to the two-yard line. And this is going to be a taunting foul, I'm guessing, against USF. Yeah, Zach Herman has his arms out now saying, is it me? Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number 61, 15-yard penalty, first down. So that will go against the junior from Oldsmar. And it's surprising because he's one of the most veteran linemen on this team. Is, you know, he played in seven games last year. He started five of them, but missed a lot of the season because of a foot injury. And uh, you could see Coach Levitt letting him know he's not happy about that. 
When you can see here, Grothy, there we're talking about leadership. He's going to talk to his offensive lineman and saying, you know better than that. And that's what a fit, no, that's what a senior does. And a guy with 40 starts, not afraid to get in his big lineman's face. Hand off this time. Grothy gives the ball up. And Mo Plancher takes it across the 15 down to the 14-yard line. I like the excitement that Grothy had there as he got into his offensive lineman's face. That's what you need from a leadership standpoint, and that's what you get out of a guy that has that much experience. He knows how to control that huddle. He knows what he's doing out there, and that's why he's had all this success. Big early play in this game. It's third and goal. The line of scrimmage is the Western Kentucky 14. Touchdown here. The Bulls take control early. Grothy to the end zone. Back in the end zone. Pass is caught. Touchdown. Theo Wilson. So Theo Wilson with his second touchdown catch of the year. Got a foot in in the back of the end zone. And what a great touch pass by Matt Groth. He just laid this right over the top. You know, you have to, sometimes you just got to lay it over the defender and had one-on-one -on -one coverage again to the outside. And, boy, electric and physical receiver he is. Another guy that came over from the defensive side and Theo Wilson and moves over to the offense. And really a big contributor to this team. So Theo Wilson comes up with the 14-yard touchdown catch. And the Bulls take control. We're halfway through our second period. USF winning at Western Kentucky, 14-3. This is John Crock and Carl Ravitch, best friends and Baseball Tonight's main duo. Two guys with two distinct styles of bringing you the game. Word is the A's bad boys on the hot seat. A former player, Crock's unafraid to bring it to fans straight. You might want to ease up on that spray tan, all right? While Ravitch keeps everything in perspective. 42.59, what is this, Tony Gwynn's career total basis? <laughs> <laughs> this is ESPN's John Crock and Carl Ravitch, and they're part of the best team in baseball. Series stands 2-2. Bulls won the last two meetings, 99 and 2000. Alvarado with the kickoff, and he gets a good foot into that one, all the way to the end zone. Across the 25 and up to the 28-yard line goes Bobby Rainey. What do you think, John? Let's take another look at that touchdown catch by Theo Wilson. Well, again, we mentioned great throw over the top and watch his right foot come down here just as he's catching the ball and you can see it. There's the catch and the right foot was down in plenty of time. I know they probably looked at it during the break, but you can see right there. He made the catch the right foot on the ground, holds on to the football and just a tremendous catch and big play for this Bulls team. And Boy, Matt Grothy, just that awesome throw over the top. Grothy off to a great start, 7-9, 84 yards and a touchdown. And speaking of quarterbacks, here goes Brandon Smith. He's going to run that thing all the way out to midfield. That's a gain of 22. And that's some of the bigger plays that this Western Kentucky University team would like to have. Great ball fake here as he finds an opening to the inside. And, you know, their longest rush last week against Tennessee was 19 yards. So they pick up 22 there, and that's what they want, some bigger plays. They have to be more of an explosive offense. They're too young to really be able to drive down the field consistently. Oh, that's exactly right. We're talking about a Western Kentucky team that only had 83 total yards last week at Tennessee. Of territory, Nate Allen. Finally, able to bump the wide receiver. Darius Brooks out of bounds. And Walt Wells goes right back to the well there as they run the same play. This time, instead of faking it to him, they actually give it to him on the outside. And you could hear the some of the Bulls uh, or Western Kentucky fans over there wanted to get a late call on Nate Allen, knocking him out of bounds. But I think that play was OK. Now, Brooks didn't start this game, but that's a big play in it. So Western Kentucky showing a little bit of uh, an ability to move the ball now. Smith 
four of seven throwing the ball. Going to pass again. Right down the seam. Intercepted in the end zone. Raymond comes up. Mr. Raymond, the senior from Palmetto. Through the end zone, and the Bulls have the ball back on their own 20-yard line. And I know Brandon Smith would like to have this back. He had some pretty good protection. They were doubling Selby to the outside and really tried to force this ball in. Nobody was open in that situation. Sometimes, you know, you get a little excited. You get a couple big plays, and, you know, you'd like to take that back. He's going to watch film tomorrow and just shake his head about that opportunity missed for this Western Kentucky University team. Well, the play action that time seemed to hold back the pass rush of USF. Smith had time, but Raymond got the football. Rosie. And takes it out of bounds and will pick up about three. And Matt Grothy, barring injury, is going to own all of the records in the Big East. There you see total offense. He's first and Pat has passed Pat White of West Virginia. White the rookie now with the Miami Dolphins. And you see just moving on up in passing yards, completions, and attempts. Grothy throws again. Pass is caught at the 35-yard line. And again, A.J. Love. I mean, it's interesting sometimes on how good athletes make plays happen. During that last play, Grothy actually wanted to throw the ball to Love, and A.J. Love was running a slant, and he was looked like he was just setting out to block somebody. And I think Grothy just ad-libbed and picked up yards. That time he goes right back to the guy after having a discussion with him in the huddle. Love's second catch of the first half. Grothy again to throw. Throwing ball. Incomplete. Couldn't quite make connections with Carlton Mitchell. Boy, the Bulls had some too deep man under coverage that time. And on the outside, Grothy with great touch just missed his receiver there. And that's the only place that you have to throw that football in that coverage is try to get it to the outside down the sidelines or somewhere down the middle. And he had him open down the sideline. Boy, when Matt Grothy has time, and he has tonight, he is throwing some very good-looking footballs. Second and ten. On the keeper, Plancher. Stays in bounds, and that extra effort may have gotten him the first down. He needed to get beyond the 45 to move the sticks, and this may be close enough to measure. I think they're automatically going to give it. He's calling, just move the chains, and he spotted that ball up ahead of the 45. You could see Plancher there. Again, we talk about his speed and his power at 203 pounds, but this guy has the ability to shift and move but when he needs to pick up that yardage he'll lower his head and get those yards for you no measurement needed it is a first down incomplete tried to swing that one out to carlton mitchell hey it's a blackout all the students and all fans of western kentucky we're supposed to wear black tonight to the stadium. Western Kentucky is wearing black uniforms for the first time ever tonight. Russell is the apparel provider for Western Kentucky, and their home base is right here in Bowling Green. Keeping it on the ground, Aston Samuels, the junior from Belglade, with his first carry. And you can see he had both hands on the football. Last week in the first half against Wofford, he had a 12-yard gain and then fumbled and didn't get the, a chance to carry the ball again. No, and he's one of the most versatile backs on this team, and you can see why you want to get the ball in his hands. But I think that emphasis probably was this week during practice to hold on to that football. And, boy, when you have a chance to play and then you lose it, you'll do whatever you can to try to get back in that lineup. And boy, he's got a lot of talent. Well, Western Kentucky is sensing the moment. And they have called their final timeout of the first half. Bulls are averaging over seven yards of play on this drive. Now, 
know, sometimes, you know, you have to stop the momentum. And Coach Elson thought that this was an appropriate time to do that, and he calls the timeout. We'll take a timeout, come back with more from Bowling Green, 14-3 USF. Well, Western Kentucky has no timeouts for the remainder of this first half. They just burned one to get together on defense a little bit. Bulls have it, first and 10 at the top of 42. Out of bounds at the 35 yard line goes Lindsey Lamar. Tonight's game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. We're happy to be here in Bowling Green. One of the biggest non-conference games ever on the campus of Western Kentucky. David Elson really gave us a lot of his time yesterday. We really appreciated his efforts, cluing us in a little bit on what's going on. A lot of enthusiasm here on this campus for this Hilltopper program. Here's Grothy. And Grothy brought down from behind. Matt Grothy caught from behind and brought down by Eric Jones. Got a cornerback coming from the outside here. He originally gets picked up, and as Grothy moves to that side, he fights off the blocker and comes to the inside and makes the play. But this is a cornerback from the outside. As you mentioned, Eric Jones, you see him there. Nice speed. You know, quarterbacks can get away from those linebackers and those defensive linemen sometimes, but those corners have just a little bit more speed most of the time. A junior from Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati. Third and five. Grothy, quick fire, intercepted. Western Kentucky, the pass is picked off. Jahad Morris, the quarterback. Western Kentucky had two interceptions last week at Tennessee. And Morris comes up with a big pick, and it stops the drive. Oh, check that. That's 41. Tor uh, Tarian Smith with the pick. Torian Smith, uh, another one of those good athletes. He actually led the team last year in tackles, a guy with some experience and uh, spent two years at a junior college and getting an opportunity to play against the big boys here. And you could see his emotion on the sideline, too, and cheering on the offense. Again, no timeouts. They've used up their timeouts, but an opportunity for Western Kentucky University to get on the scoreboard with four minutes to go in the half. So Tarian Smith, the senior inside linebacker from Perry, Georgia, Voted the most improved linebacker in the spring, a new starter. Got a look at Chaz Hine walking off the field there. Was banged up on that last play, and he's a guy that's just a sophomore and a former walk-on for this Bulls team and earned himself a scholarship, and those are the type of guys you hate to see go out there because you know how hard they've worked to be able to earn that spot out there. Not only earn a scholarship, but that opportunity to start. Second turnover tonight for the Bulls. Trying to bounce it outside and doing so successfully is Bobby Rainey. And Keon Wilson wrestles him out of bounds, but not before he takes it all the way down to the Bulls 25. Well, we asked Coach Elson about Rainey, how many carries he had, gets a ball game, and he said he's not a guy that's going to get 25 to 30 carries a ball game, but probably 15 to 18. But you want those 15 to 18 to be productive like this as you see him bounce to the outside. A couple big gains for this guy, and he's a guy that can pick up yards quick for you. Rainey rushed for over 2,000 yards and scored 31 touchdowns as a high school senior. Just 5'11". Inside, Chris Robinson is able to make the tackle before Brandon Smith could get going on the quarterback keeper. That time, as he kept it to the inside, Michael Patterson, the right guard, 74, just comes up through there. A big hole. It's just like a big fullback leading, fullback leading the way up through and a big hole for Brandon Smith. Western Kentucky's last four running plays have now gone for 70 yards. Second down and six. 
Brady again. And he is slowed down by Robinson, but not before he takes it inside the 20, down to the 14, in fact, and picks up a first down. So Western Kentucky inside of three minutes to go now in the first half in the red zone. Again, you see the speed he has to the outside. Again, great blocks to the outside, and you can see wide receiver or tight end Jack Doyle, a guy that we haven't mentioned a whole lot tonight. They love the tight ends here at Western Kentucky, and Doyle making a nice block and creating room for Rainey. There's George Selby, and the Bulls want to stop this drive right here. Western Kentucky. But will this one come back? A 14-yard touchdown run by Brandon Smith may come off the board. Holding offense, number 70, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Cody Hughes, the senior from Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch High School. Boy, and you can only take so much as a coach, and you can see Coach Elson just look in the middle here. Is is he holding? And looks like he Ooh. did have a takedown yeah. there. He was blown off the ball, actually, is Cody Hughes, a guy that was a guard that was moved to the center position when they lost two centers earlier. So a guy with not a whole lot of experience here, but he was blown off the ball, and as he was falling back, he actually looked like he tackled him. Western Kentucky, 10 penalties for over 100 yards, and we're still in the first half for USF Quentin Washington the cornerback now coming off the field under his own powers so take a touchdown off the board for David Elson in Western Kentucky and we will replay the down yeah, David Elson a little frustrated after that, getting on the officials a bit. When he looks at the film, he'll understand why that call was made. Looked like a good call. Yes. First and 20. Smith on the keeper again, cuts it back across the 20. Down to the 18-yard line for a gain of six. A touchdown here right before halftime would really keep Western Kentucky emotionally in this game. Emotion, and that's what they need. Something big to happen here at the end of it. As you mentioned, no timeouts. And if they're able to get back in the end zone after this was called, called back, it would have used up some more time that this South Florida Bulls team could use to go down and score. So they have to take advantage of this. And right now, I think they've got the South Florida Bulls team a little gassed. Play a little late coming into the huddle for Western Kentucky and a low snap. But despite those things, Rainey's able to take it down to the 14 yard line. So it'll be third down and about 10. Well, the possessions tonight outside of the 10 play drive that only covered 11 yards following the turnover for a field goal have been three and outs. In the early going, Western Kentucky was throwing virtually every play. Now they've run only one play, one pass play, and their last eight offensive snaps. Third and ten. Setting up the middle screen to Rainey. And he has got nowhere to go. And he is ridden out of bounds by Craig Marshall. And it was really Robinson who blew that play up. A great play call there as you anticipate this Bulls team coming after him hard. The screen was set up well, and Rainey does a nice job of fighting on the outside. He just chips on Selvey, but gets to the outside, makes a move here, and you can see the spoon and athleticism of number 94 there, Marshall. As he gets to the outside, the fans wanted a little late hit call there, but not going to get it. Casey Tynus on to attempt a field goal. This will be a 31-yard attempt from the left hash. And Jim Levitt will burn a timeout here. We have exactly one minute to go before halftime. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a conversation with Doug Woolard, the athletic director at the University of South Florida. Talk a little football, talk a little Big East basketball. 
We'll check scores from around the Big East, talk about the players of the week in the Big East Conference also, and we'll check all the highlights and stats from a, a wild first half. Yeah, wild. It seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of rhythm to this first half. So many penalties, as, as we've noted on here, but you know, once you get something going, there's a, a call that brings you back. So neither one of these teams have been able to get into a great rhythm, and you could tell offensively they've been able to move the ball, take away the penalties, and I think there's a lot of success offensively tonight. John, what is David Elson going to tell his team when they get back to the locker room? Composure. He's going to have to try to remain composed himself because you know he's just going to get on these guys. But, uh, you know, there are a bunch of young guys that we talked about that have to start believing in each other if they want to win ball games. And, um, you know, that's going to come within the locker room. Yeah, that was one of your keys to the game. 31-yard field goal attempt. Snap is good. Ball is down and right through. So Tynus with his second field goal of the night. A 31-yarder. This game is 14-6. And that's really amazing when you consider that Western Kentucky's had over 100 yards and penalties here in the first half. Well, that just goes to show you that they've been moving the ball offensively out there. As we mentioned, 11-yard drive for a field goal, but they probably went 50 yards at least on the drive just trying to make up for the 15-yard penalties they've had. So they're going to have to go in at halftime and regroup, regroup and uh, try to get away from making the crazy mistakes and give themselves an opportunity. Seven plays, 39 yards. The drive took over three minutes. Really the difference here in the first half, Western Kentucky's been in the red zone twice. They've settled for two field goals. USF's been in the red zone twice. They've scored two touchdowns. It's 14-6. USF turnovers have contributed to keeping the Hilltoppers here in the game early. USF has one timeout to work with. Dontavia Bogan set to receive the kick. And here's Titus kick. Line drive, fielded at the 11. And right up the middle goes Bogan, out near the 40-yard line. So that's a 30-yard kickoff return for Bogan. And how dangerous is he? We mentioned him at the top, as you did, one of the key players of this game and guy that set records for return yards, and he finds a hole once he does. Not a guy that hits it really hard, but when he finds that hole, he can just scoot right through it. If it hadn't been for the otherworldly year returning kicks by Marty Gilliard of Cincinnati last year, Dontavia Bogan would have led the Big East in most kick return categories. From the 40, one timeout. Here's Grothy on the keeper. Oh, and he has met solidly as he reaches the 46. That was a good hit by Torian Smith. And Jim Levitt's going to burn his last time out here. Here's another look at that tough hit. Yeah, you mentioned you could hear it all the way up here in the press box as he makes his way up here. And, boy, can't tell by that angle, but uh, that was a good pop by Smith as he comes up. And you can see Grothy in the, on the sidelines there rubbing that right elbow a little bit, but uh, tough guy. South Florida fans love to see Grothy carry the football because good things happen when he does, but there's always that risk of injury, and you'd hate to lose him before the Big East season even begins. Uh, you could talk all you want about B.J. Daniels, and uh, you can see there, eight, eight out of 12, and that's building off of 83% completion last week. So eight rushes for 42 yards. He's just consistent. He can, he can beat you with his legs, and he can beat you through the air, but a guy that's just a pure leader of this team, and they know, this Bulls team know that they can go to him when they need to. 50 of those 96 pass yards for Grothy came on that Long completion to Carlton Mitchell that set up the Mo Blanchard touchdown. The first of the night for the Bulls. First down and out of bounds. Pass is caught by Patrick Richardson. 
And so Richardson now has two catches here in the first half. Richardson very disciplined. As that, you find yourself sitting on the sidelines. He waited there for a good four or five seconds with nobody covering him. Sometimes you want to try to find another opening, but he just sat there patiently and was rewarded with the ball. No timeouts for the Bulls. Just over a half minute to go, first half. Grothy. Trying to make things happen again. This is caught. And it's A.J. Love. So Love has three catches here in the first half. And that's just what I talked about on the last play. Is as Grothy's scrambling in the backfield, his receivers are doing what they can, and A.J. Love just sits on the sideline there, and the Grothy knows to look out there. And the same thing happened last week as a lot of checkdowns to Carl Mitchell was successful for this team. And Grothy looks for those guys just sitting there and waiting on the outside. Line of scrimmage is the 32. Delbert Alvarado missed a 40-yard field goal attempt in the first quarter. Sending this one to the end zone. Too long for Bogan. Bogan had a step. Second and 10. Still 21 seconds to go. The poise of Grothy right there. He knows he had him one-on-one -on, -one on the outside and he was going to throw that ball in a situation where either Bogan makes the catch or nobody makes that catch. So that's the experience. He still knows he has 21 seconds, and the clock will stop if they can pick up this first down. So Mike Canales and the Bulls tried to go long that time. We'll see if this pass might put a field goal, make a field goal a possibility. Brophy. And he's strong enough to get rid of that football. Couldn't take a sack in that situation. Would have ended the half, most likely. So the clock is stopped, third and ten. Jared Clendenin coming off his right, right defensive end side as he, or left side as he comes up through here and fights him off, and Clendenin jumping up and down. He's the best defensive lineman on this Western Kentucky University team. And last week he was a little bit too much read. They wanted him to attack more, just like he did on that play. Grothy, two of four on this drive. Blitz coming. Grothy throws. Too tall. Incomplete. He was looking for Richardson. Again, Grothy not making a mistake there, turning the ball over here at the end of the half. He was going to try to fit that ball in with that too deep coverage as he was running that corner pattern and really throwing it into the only spot where his receiver will make the catch or it's out of bounds. Alvarado does come onto the field. This will be a 49-yard field goal attempt from the left hash. On the way. No good. And again, he's wide to the left. So four seconds remain. So Alvarado kicked a 30-yard field goal last week. In fact, he made a field goal and was 5-for-5 five five on point afters and had two punts. You know, this is kind of amazing. I didn't mean to interrupt, John, but this is sort of amazing in itself. The first half is about to end. Western Kentucky has now played six consecutive quarters to start this season. And they have yet to force their opponent to punt the football. And we have come to the end of the first half. This one's still hanging in the balance. USF's got the lead in total yards. They've got the lead on the scoreboard. But it's only 14 to 6. And when you're away from home, anything can happen. We'll take a timeout from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and begin our halftime activities when we return. At the half, USF leads Western Kentucky 14-6. From the nine. And Rainey with an outstanding return. Takes it out to the 35-yard line. That's a 26-yard kickoff return. So unlike last week at Tennessee, 
when Western Kentucky started the second half down 28 nothing this week against USF they are at home and they are well within striking distance trailing now by just eight at 14 to six. Hilltoppers have been in the red zone twice collected two field goals. There you see Smith's numbers in the first half. Quarterback keeper again. And George Selby runs him down from behind, but not before he picks up five yards. And taking a page out of the Bulls book as Brandon Smith keeps that ball. And, uh, you know, he's the leading rusher for this Western Kentucky University team coming up after the first half. And uh, they're going to continue to just pound this guy, these guys. They keep running inside. They know they have speed on the outside. So trying to get on the edge against this Bulls team is very difficult. So they're just attacking them, running up the middle. Western Kentucky shows a tight formation for the first time tonight. Handoff goes to Rainey, and he just runs into a wall of white-clad defenders from USF. Well, USF, one of the adjustments they had to make at halftime was to defend that play right there. A lot of success for the Hilltoppers as they keep faking the ball to the inside, and Brandon Smith holds on to her. They give it to the outside and let that receiver come around and cut up for some yardage. But the one thing Western Kentucky has not done off of that is thrown the ball and look for them to set up a throw on in that situation off of that same play fake. Uh, Jim Levitt with a quick word for Corey Grissom. Here's third down. Smith across the middle. He's got the pass. It's complete. It's very close to the first down. In fact, it will get the first down by a half a yard. And that's Jack Doyle, redshirt freshman from Indianapolis. Now we, we mentioned Doyle, a guy with a former quarterback, a good athlete, and a big guy at six foot five, a nice target, and uh, broke his leg last February, but he came back after the spring. So he's a guy that they can build this offense around. Now Doyle, one of the bright spots in their loss in Knoxville last week, had four catches in the game against the Balls. Rainey does a nice job following his blocks. In the Bulls territory and down to the 43-yard line. And that's a 16-yard gainer. Now you look at number three, Bobby Rainey, and number three, Mo Plancher for this Bulls team. And if they switch jerseys at halftime, you may not know which guy is which. They look, look about the same as they're running up through there. And both these guys about the same size and both have the quickness and the ability to get it up the field. Quentin Washington is back out on defense for USF. He was shaken up late in the first half. Nate Allen made the stop for the Bulls. First down. Rainey again. And he just cuts back right, right into the pursuit. He turned right back into the arms of Terrell McLean. And that time the Bulls defense made an adjustment, actually brought a linebacker over outside of George Selby on the outside and nowhere to go. A low snap here, but still nowhere to go on the outside. And that's where Western Kentucky has the opportunity. Maybe if they start overloading to the sidelines there to play action fake and run some type of boot to the field and catch somebody coming across. Keon Wilson and Jason Pierre-Paul also helped wrap him up. shifts right before the snap. Here's Smith. Makes two tackles, miss. And takes it down to the 41. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky, about an hour north of Nashville on the campus of Western Kentucky University for college football tonight at L.T. Smith Stadium. USF in town to take on the Hilltoppers. I'm Dave Weekly, and John Gregory is our analyst tonight. Good crowd on hand tonight. Well, wondering if we're going to get north of 20,000. Historically here in Bowling Green, they have had six crowds of 20,000 or more all time. USF, one of the best non-conference opponents to ever play in this facility. Smith with all kinds of time. And he just throws that away. And as an ex-quarterback yourself, there is a flag down. As an ex-quarterback yourself, John, I'm sure you could appreciate that smart play by the fifth-year senior. Yeah, he was looking for the corner pattern. It wasn't open. He tried to go back to his secondary receiver and wasn't there. Holding offense, and Brady two. Penalty will be declined. Fourth down. 
Oh, so Jack Doyle, a tight end, called on the hold, and Jim Levitt's going to decline that. It brings up fourth down and eight. See, and there was good protection that time. They left the tight end, left it back there. And when you do that, there's plenty of time to throw the football, and they get a nice job of covering it. So you only have three receivers going out for a pass. It makes it very difficult if a guy can't get open. But Brandon Smith, as you mentioned, does a nice job of just getting rid of that and staying out of a negative play. Third punt of the night coming from Jeremy Moore. Sends it down inside the five. And a touchback. Boy, the Hilltoppers were down there, but it's into the end zone. When I take a look at that coming down, again, South Florida Bulls were close to actually letting that ball hit the back of a heel there and almost an opportunity for Western Kentucky University to jump back on top of it. One more look at that punt as we head to the break. USF about to get the football for the first time in the second half. They lead by eight on the road. That's one of the many, many fans on the bank here at LT Smith Stadium underneath the scoreboard tonight. 14-6, Bulls with the ball and the lead. Blancher takes the initial hit and is able to fall forward for a three-yard gain. Second down and seven. John, here's a look at the comparison to this point of our two quarterbacks tonight, Matt Grothy for USF and Brandon Smith of Western Kentucky. Well, when you look at that, what stands out, 32 yards passing for Brandon Smith, and they started this ball game throwing the football a lot more than they have, and they've turned it into more of a, a run game tonight. So see if they can get more of a passing game started here in the second half. Nowhere to go for Mo Blanchard. Jared Clendenin and Mike Gothard the stop. One more look at that comparison. And Grothy really making his pass attempts pay off with 117 passing yards. Bulls four of seven on third down tonight. Facing third and six. Protection's good for Brophy and he threads the needle to Carlton Mitchell and it's a first down up at the 33. A gain of nine and the sticks move for USF. Now Carlton Mitchell, as we mentioned before last week, going to him, picking up a lot of first downs here, as you can see, delivers a nice throw to the outside, and Mitchell driving at the defender, getting his space, and then breaking it off. Nice route. Blancher, whoa. And those holes that were there early in this game to run the football, not there right now. And that's Jamarcus Allen. And Jamarcus Allen, the redshirt freshman from Orlando, playing a little, with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Listen to the hit. Bulls keep it on the ground. Up to the 39-yard line, another run. David Elson told us a very interesting story about Jamarcus Allen yesterday. He's a redshirt freshman from Orlando. He's got a little bit of a problem. Uh, a disagreement with USF. They offered him a scholarship, he claims. He accepted. One thing led to another. Anyway, he ended up at, at Western Kentucky, so he's really been looking forward to this game and getting a shot against the Bulls. Broken steps up and fires. Too tall, incomplete. Trying to get that football to Patrick Richardson. And Jamarcus Allen coming off the field. Allen played at Boone High School in Orlando. He was the Central Florida Defensive Player of the Year for the 6A runners-up in the state of Florida his senior year. And this is the first time all season that Western Kentucky has forced a punt. Snap back to Alvarado, and he sends it down the field with his right foot. 
field it at the 10. And into the open field for a moment goes Jake Gabler, and a flag is down at the 33. Well, you could see Gabler's speed there and first punt return of the year, and he's During the return, block in the back, return team, the 28, 10-yard penalty, first down. And you can see Coach Elson is just beside himself with all the penalties tonight. You know, we came out to the walkthrough yesterday, and he had a big, heavy chain around his neck, a big link chain. I was just like, the, remember the wrestler, the ultimate warrior? It was sort of like that. And he wouldn't admit, he wouldn't tell us at first what it was all about. But before the game today, he chained up the gate near the USF locker room. And that was a sign to the players that they weren't going to get out tonight. Now you're coming into our house. This is our house. Let's protect it. And you just uh, do anything you can to try to motivate players. And uh, big game to do that for. You know, I, I, it's, it's nice that a coach does that and takes the extra effort. Smith, and that pass is batted down. And Pierre Paul. Jason Pierre-Paul at 6'6", 265. You know, he's got the wingspan of a power forward in the NBA. You can see here last week he hurdled a player to get up in the face and make a tackle, and you can see his athletic ability there. He's got some hops, and when you combine him with Selby on the other side, boy, that's some good bookend defensive ends. Good-looking player. And a guy that could not wait to get into the lineup, coming here a little bit late this year. Well, you think about the lack of depth USF had at times last year along the D-line. This year, the exact opposite. Rainey breaking tackles. And a flag is down again as he takes it to the 26 for a gain of three. I think we're going to get another holding call. Holding offense, number 68, 10-yard penalty, second down. And that's the right tackle, Preston King. Well, he's a legacy here at Western Kentucky. His dad was a letterman for the Hilltoppers in the early 80s for three years. And on my count, we're closing in on what, about 130 yards in penalties? Yeah, and I think everybody on the offensive front has gotten one now, possibly. And when they watch the film on with the offensive line coach tomorrow and coordinator Walt Wells, he's gonna he's really gonna have to get into these guys and find out what's going on. Second and twenty. Smith on the design keeper. Up to about the 16 yard line. So it'll be third down and long. Oh, yes. And here's an opportunity for USF. They're down linemen to just pin their ears back and come after the quarterback, Brandon Smith. And I think Western Kentucky knows that. And I doubt that they're going to put themselves in a position here to turn the ball over. They have to play field position right here. And maybe one of the reasons why tonight this Western Kentucky team is holding an awful lot is because of the athletic ability that this Bulls team has. And across that defensive front. Just a very difficult job slowing these guys down. You can look at some of the faces on the D-line for USF, including Leslie Stirrups. Here's Smith. Nearly intercepted. Tried to thread the needle. Nate Allen, the free safety, broke it up. That pass was intended for Jack Doyle right down the seam. Doyle, the big tight end, releasing there. You can see him coming off the ball, and Brandon Smith just staring down the receiver with Nate Allen right there. Makes a nice play breaking that up, but that's one of those dangerous passes I was talking about. You don't want to turn it over there. Just try to play a little bit of field position if you can and make the Bulls try to drive as far as they can to get a points on the board. Kick is taken back at the 30-yard line. 
And Theo Wilson continues to be on the bench, and that was an opportunity, second opportunity of the night for Farron Horns, the junior from Bradenton, to return a kick. During the return, holding on the return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Horns was a former walk on. Back there to return punts for USF. He's returned a couple of them tonight. 6 44 to go in the third. Jim Levin and the Bulls lead, but by only the eight. USF cheerleaders trying to cheer the bull on. Bulls on. 14 6, 6 44 to go. A lot of folks didn't expect this one to be this tight for this long. We'll see what happens on this drive. Brophy on the keeper. And he is dragged down by Jared Clendenin. And despite the fact that we, we don't mean to keep harping on this, but despite the fact that Western Kentucky has been penalized a dozen times for 119 yards, they're right in this game. And Jared Clendenin, as we mentioned before last week, too much reading, they said, just holding up a deep offensive lineman. And this week they wanted him to attack a little bit more, and he seems like he's changed his game a little bit. Grothy, all kinds of time. Still looking, flushed from the pocket. He's so dangerous when he runs. Ducks out of bounds at the 28. So this is going to be third down and six. Again, great protection here, as you can see, stays in the pocket. Last year, he would have probably just took off up the middle, and this year, he's actually trying to stay in the pocket and make something happen with his arm. And finally, it gets to a point where you have to move to the outside. He did that, did that and picks up yardage and makes it very manageable here on third down. You see the Bulls, 5-9 and nine on third down tonight. Third and a short six. And Carlton Mitchell has got all kinds of room. He's got the corner, still on his feet, tight roping down the sidelines. And he's caught just shy of the goal line. Knocked out of bounds all the way down at the seven yard line. I tell you what, if you, if you put that play over the top of the one that Mitchell had earlier today, there's the same crossing route. The only difference is Grothy had to step up in the pocket that time. You had two crossers, plenty of time to throw the football. And again, Mitchell does almost identical to the last time where he was knocked out at the two-yard line. Uses his speed to get up the sidelines. Here he tries to make a little move. He knows last time he was caught from that area and gets knocked out just outside the five this time. All right, Mitchell, four catches, 130 yards tonight. And it was a direct snap to B.J. Daniels who takes it in for the touchdown. So Daniels comes into the game. Grothy splits out wide. They hike the football to Daniels, and he takes it in for the touchdown for USF. And just another tool in the arsenal of this Bulls team. As you can see, the speed he has to the outside, he just bounces it out here. He knows that he has enough speed to get to that outside. That was designed to go inside, but he just made that thing happen on his own. And BJ's just going to stay on the field and be the holder for Alvarado as he attempts the extra point. And the kick is up and good. So Carlton Mitchell with the big reception down to the seven yard line. B.J. Daniels from Tallahassee comes in off the bench and does the rest. The red shirt freshman into the end zone for the touchdown for USF. Well, Carlton Mitchell was on the receiving end of a 69 yard catch and go from quarterback Matt Grothy and it set up the seven yard touchdown run by B.J. Daniels. Four plays, 77 yards, under two minutes. B.J. Daniels, a seven-yard touchdown run. And the two big pass plays, the 69-yarder to Mitchell and the 50-yarder in the first half, that's 60% of Matt Grothy's passing totals to this point. And that ball is fielded at the one-yard line. 
And coming all the way back out of there was Marvell Booker. Marvell Booker, 5'9", 216 pounds, a senior from Louisville. That was a very dangerous play. He was kind of caught up there. The ball was on the goal line. Wasn't sure if he should run it back or not. He took off, made a decision, didn't hesitate. Once he made, decided to go, he, he took off and turned it into a big play. I think Joe Tracy, the defensive coordinator for USF, is going to be pretty pleased to this point with the effort of his defense. If you take uh, into consideration that Wofford scored in their first possession last week, this Bulls defense has now gone five quarters plus without allowing a touchdown. And again, this Bulls defense has made an adjustment and moved their linebacker out to the outside. They've got their defensive end and they're really secure on that sideline as they keep running to this Western Kentucky team keeps running to the sideline and they've made a nice adjustment. You can see Mike Canales, the offensive coordinator, in the far right hand portion of your screen. Joe Tracy, the defensive coordinator, is down on the field for USF. That carry, by the way, was from Marcus Vasquez. Last week he caught into the game and wanted to throw a halfback pass against the balls. Here's Smith. It's a first down and a little bit more to Quinterrence Cooper, the junior from St. Augustine, Florida. Brandon Smith does a nice job here. Another low snap as, as he comes up here. Takes a big hit after the throw, but ball is low, and he's trying to get that out in a hurry, and you can see him. Oh, left knee as Harris comes in there, but he's still in the ball game, but delivers a nice throw as he kind of limps up to the line there. Tough guy. Aaron Harris get a lot of snaps inside at defensive tackle tonight. Western Kentucky, 45 passing yards. That pass is batted away by George Selvey. You know, when you see George Selvey make a play like that, it's almost like he's going to squeeze that ball like a grapefruit in his right hand and just keep running. <laughs> yeah, a guy with a lot of talent. That's how quick he's off the ball there. You don't even have time for a play fake. Watch him come off the line here and just beat the defense, <laughs> offensive tackle. And this boy, he almost stole that out of the hand of the quarterback. He's so quick. Incompletion stops the clock. We're getting late in the third quarter. Three and a half minutes to go. It was 14-6 at the break. Bulls have scored the only touchdown here in the second half. 21-6. Smith on the keeper. And it breaks open for him in the middle of the field. And he takes it down to the Bulls 41. Sixteen yards on the gainer. You now when you look at Smith, he's a guy that's really earned the opportunity through spring ball and fall ball and trying to get this starting position. He's been here, played behind guys his whole career, and now has the opportunity and really not making a whole lot of mistakes and playing pretty solid for this Hilltopper team. And a backup quarterback is a redshirt freshman from St. Augustine, Juan Jakes. They're very high on him as well. Smith able to get that away, and that's a completed pass. Smith with a little Houdini action in and was able to get that ball away to Brooks who pulled it in. Terrell McClain, the nose tackle, is going crazy. He knew he had him in his grasp here and just wow. could not get him down. He was fighting to do it and what a nice play to be able to deliver a pass that's catchable out there to his wide receiver. Trying to get late here in the third and now whistles before the snap. Play is under yeah, they're going to take a look at that catch. See if we can get a look at this. Did he have both hands underneath the football? Don't know if he had them both underneath. It looked like he had them both on the side. It, tough to see. Very close call. There it looks like they may have been underneath. Yeah. But oh, I don't know. I thought that replay might have showed the ball bouncing off the turf. Yeah. Glad we don't have to make this call. <laughs> we can just. Tough to say, but you, as you always say, you know, it has to, you know, the, the call on the field is a catch. So to overturn it, you've got to have indisputable evidence. So they're going to take a look at this. 
just a reminder, viewers, this call was originally ruled a catch. In any case, it was a great play by Smith just to get rid of the football. It was, and, and a great effort to try to make that catch and haul it in. Well, but McLean's back to the nose tackle. He, you don't get the opportunity that much as a nose tackle to get in there and get a sack, and he had him in the grasp and just couldn't get him down. And as we continue to look at this, this is a very difficult call. You know, it's funny, uh, the psychology of these things is it, it, it seems like the longer it takes for the review to take place, the more likely it is the play is going to be overturned. But we'll see. And when you look at that, too, you got that red stripe up around the shoulder pads, and it almost looks like that's the ball that was coming out, but it could have been the red you stripe know, you were, around the shoulder pads. You were making a good point about Brandon Smith and his development just a minute ago, John. Uh, After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Completed catch, second down. So this Big East crew... On the field, the replay officials are from the Sun Belt up top, and that play is going to stand. Western Kentucky, four first downs this half. They only had six in the first. Smith's development here at Western Kentucky was really slowed by the fact he broke his leg when he was a little younger. There's Rainey. And the Western Kentucky bench doing a little bit of barking over there. Pierre Paul with a stop for USF. Pierre Paul penetration will kill an offense as they're trying to get to the outside. And again, hit, finding his way into the backfield and just getting in the way of the running back is you get penetration and get back into that as deep as the running back there. And that's what he did and just stuck his hand out and made a nice play. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky, LT Smith Stadium, college football tonight. USF visiting Western Kentucky of the Sun Belt Conference. I'm Dave Weekly. John Gregory is our analyst tonight. Hope you're enjoying the action. Been a pretty good ball game. Here's Smith in and out of his intended receiver. And do we have a flag? A late flag is going to come down, and this is going to be a personal foul against USF. Marcus Vasquez was the intended receiver, and this is going to go against Tyson Butler. Yeah, Vasquez saved here by getting this call against him. After the play was over, personal foul, defense, number 30, 15-yard penalty, first down. And that may be a result from the play before that when the bench of Western Kentucky was trying to get a call on their sideline. And at that time, I don't know if that was a late hit or not, but he just gave him that extra push that maybe he didn't need to on the sideline. Take a look here. A little bit late. He took a couple steps, and there he gives him an extra shove. And when he did that, referee standing right there, you're always going to get that call. Yeah, the official announced it was against number 30, but we assume it's Butler. Here's Smith. Across the 20. 15. And that ball appeared to come loose for just a moment. Strong tackle in there by Jerome Murphy. Boy, Murphy with the big hit. Again, same thing. Tacking the inside here, staying off the edge on the outside and getting, getting the yards, as many yards as they can. They'll take three or four, and then they're going to pop one every once in a while for 10 as well. Second and a yard. Inside the 10, inside the 5, to the goal line. Touchdown, Western Kentucky. Morell Booker, the senior from Louisville, takes it in for the touchdown. And this one's not quite over yet. Booker picks up a great block here on the strong safety as it looks like somebody comes out there and cuts it. We'll take a look and see if we can see here. You got a pulling guard right there, number 68. Preston King comes to the outside and just opens up opportunity for Booker. And Booker, after that kickoff return, may have earned that opportunity to take that in. The extra point attempt is up and good. 
Nine plays, 71 yards, four minutes and 16 seconds. And Western Kentucky. Do you have any problem with the strategy of going for the uh, one point extra point there, John? Well, to make it 21-13. You know what? I, I really don't. Uh, the coaches up in the press box normally have that chart on what they're going to do and where in the game it is. And if they're following that chart, they're telling them there's going to be time to score some more, and we're going to have to do that anyway. So why not build the, on the confidence in here? And let's take a look again at this block to the outside. You see that cut right there creates that opportunity for him, and that's a big offensive tackle getting to the outside and Preston King at 6'5", 307, making that play right there that pops and opens that up for Booker to get to the outside, and he does the rest. Yeah, Booker did a good job. That block by King took out Chris Robinson. He was able to make the corner, break a tackle, and get on into the end zone. 21-13. Hogan and Wilson back to receive the kick. And this one is going to go out of bounds. And that is a real momentum killer for Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky has committed fouls tonight in just about every imaginable way. And how important was that? Right? We talked about kicking that extra point keeps the momentum going. You don't you don't make it, and you know it, it may turn things around. And then you have a kicker that kicks it out of bounds like that. We've seen that an awful lot this year. Kickers kicking the ball out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Well, we placed in the 40 yard line. First down. All right. So Jim Levitt had the option of receiving another kick or taking the ball at the 40, and USF says we'll just take the ball. So this drive will start at the 40 yard line. Inside of a half a minute to go third quarter. Both teams have scored a touchdown since halftime. Eight point edge for USF. Tied it in motion. Plancher trying to get to the outside. And he sort of pinballs his way up near the 46. And Plancher now with a dozen carries and 59 yards. USF with the edge in yards this quarter and overall. Last week, USF held Wofford to 211 total yards. We've come to the end of the third quarter. This one's turning out to be a little tighter than most expected. Jim Levin and the Bulls have the lead, but it's only by eight at Western Kentucky. Tonight's game being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television heading to the fourth quarter. Matt Grothy throwing for nearly 200 yards and has rushed the football for 44 more. Bulls have the ball as we start the fourth and an eight-point lead. And there goes Moses Plancher. And Plancher has been the money man carrying the football again tonight. That's his 13th carry, and he has gone over 60 yards. And David Elson, we just saw him, a, a, a flash of him just a moment ago, the head coach of Western Kentucky. This was the kind of scenario he was really hoping for, to be in the game at home in the fourth quarter. You know, when you, and when you talk, we talked with him yesterday, he had a confidence about him that he felt like his team could be in this ball game in the fourth quarter if they just didn't make mistakes. But they have made them tonight, but they're still in. Plancher again. Look at him work for yards as he gets up near the first down marker. Boy, his momentum is always falling forward. And you can see those wristbands 
for Moses Plancher, EP. That That's a, a tribute to his cousin, Eric Plancher, who, who was a running back at the University of Central Florida and died during an off-season workout. And that was a very emotional scene last year when USF played at UCF, and he was named as the, the surprise starter at tailback and had one of his better games that night in Orlando. 21-13, the Bulls with the ball. And there goes the freshman, Lindsey Lamar. And you can see he just glides, that 4-3 speed. He just gobbles up the yards. Wow, it's amazing how quick he looks when he gets to the outside. But last week he scores his touchdown. He breaks tackles to score it here. Huge hole. Wide open on the inside is Western Kentucky anticipating Grothy going to the outside. And you see the talent that Lamar has. And as you mentioned, just a freshman. B.J. Danielson, it's under center now. With Brody at the top of the formation. Lindsey Lamar inside the five near the pylon. Denied the touchdown, but out of bounds inside the two-yard line. So for the third time tonight, we see Grothy and Daniels in the lineup together. And that's what makes this Bulls team so difficult to stop now when they add this weapon Offense. to the outside. 15-yard penalty, first down. And this one is coming back, a big penalty against the Bulls. What I was saying is it makes this so unpredictable when you can run in a B.J. Daniels like that and Grothy to the outside. And, you know, it's still a threat to the outside that you could double pass with Grothy out there. There's so much that you can do. But when you have the speed that Lamar has and Plancher's strength to the inside, it's just a very dangerous offense. Plancher. Picking up 4.8 yards per carry tonight. Bulls officially have penetrated the red zone on this drive, and their three previous trips into the red zone resulted in touchdowns tonight. And the pursuit finally catches up with Plancher. Mo Plancher to the 26 yard line. It'll be second down and 25. Darvis McBride, the inside linebacker, really had good penetration there, and Plancher was able to escape that and pick up some yardage for his team, and that's the ability he has. But uh, Ball, and what a bounce. It bounced right back into his arms. So the ball was stripped from Grothy as he was carrying it under his right arm, and the ball took a bounce right back to him. He got a little smile on his face because he knows he's fortunate that this ball came back. Again, everybody covered, and Grothy oh. just, he just drops drops it. it, just loses the ball, and Smart enough to just jump back on top of it. As you mentioned, fortunate that he got the right bounce. Third and 13. Blancher splits out wide. Trips to the bottom, an empty set. Grothy looking, firing, end zone. Touchdown! The catch is made by Ben Busby. So Busby had his first career touchdown at Louisville and comes up with another touchdown catch. A big one here early in the fourth. Again, pressure that moves Grothy out of the pocket. And there you can see his great footwork, not looking to run the football. He knows he needed to pick up a good amount of yardage there, 15 yards or so, and just tosses it up to the back of the end zone. Again, only where his guy can make a catch and a great throw again by Grothy. Ben Busby, that ball, if he hadn't caught it, Bogan was right there as well. But he pulls it in for the score. 28-13, the Bulls. Okay. 
Did you hear what I said about the attendance? Okay. <clears throat> Twenty-eight thirteen, USF leads Western Kentucky. Eleven twenty-six to go in the fourth. Ben Busby, the tight end, with a seventeen-yard catch for a score. So let's go ahead and flash back to another great game for both Grothy and Busby. The St. Petersburg Bowl, the Magic Jack Bowl last year at the Trop against Memphis from Conference USA. Matt Grothy rushed for 64, threw for 236 yards. Ben Busby, a 13-yard touchdown, 41-14. So we'll see now if Western Kentucky can get back into the game. USF now with two touchdowns since halftime. Led this one 14-6 at the break. Both teams scored touchdowns in the third quarter. And Grothy to Busby, a 17-yard score just moments ago. There you go. Boy. And a good kick into the end zone. Alvarado sends that one deep. And a flag is down. We've had plenty of penalties, both teams. USF's been penalized eight times for 80 yards tonight, and we talked about Western Kentucky 12 times for 119 yards. There is no foul on the play. Touchback, first down. Maybe they just dropped a flag out of habit. <laughs> Maybe it is. Or one of them felt like he just needed to throw because he hasn't called a penalty tonight. So. <laughs> there you see Grothy. You know, if these first two games have been any indication, Matt Grothy is on his way to a very, very good season. 50 touchdown passes in his career. This quarterback keeper has worked all night for Western Kentucky. And Brandon Smith takes it up near the 27-yard line. You know, Dave, when you look at both these quarterbacks, both seniors, and you know, we said Coach Levitt at the top of the show here that uh, Grothy has worked extremely hard during the fall camp and spring camp, knowing that it's your senior year and your last shot. You're going to give every possible effort that you can and both of these quarterbacks are doing that tonight and uh, a lot of credit to the work ethic that these guys have. Now we talked a little bit early in the game about would this be the night that the Bulls would get a hundred yard rusher. Flag is down free play and Smith takes it across the 30 up near the 34 yard line. And Western Kentucky may opt to take the play here. Offside, defense number 95, penalty will be declined, first down. Yeah, about a one-yard difference, so David Elson will take the play. The point is that Smith has now carried the ball 15 times for 95 yards. So when we're talking about 100 yards rushers tonight, I really didn't take into consideration it might be the quarterback for Western Kentucky. <laughs> You know, Selby gets called for that offsides there. It's amazing that he doesn't get called for it more often as quick as he is off of the ball. Well, they just keep going right to Smith, and that time he paid for it after a one-yard gain. And he really got smacked. Nate Allen was in there, and McLean was the one who really put the wood to him. Oh, well, you got McLean at 306, just stuffing the inside. You could see the size that they have there at 6'3, 306, just a junior. Smith goes under center in the pitch back. And that was a pretty good cutback by Bobby Rainey. He cut it back inside, up the grain against the pursuit, and was able to get the ball across the 40-yard line. So it'll be third down and two. And you can see it here. Right at the last minute, he makes a little juke to the inside here and just picks up a couple more yards. And real shifty runner, and that's 
falling forward, getting those one or two yards can make a big difference. Joe Tracy continues to swap defensive linemen. Craig Marshall and Corey Grissom come in to get some fresh legs on the field. Smith incomplete. He threw that one wide of Quinterrence Cooper. So it's decision time here. It's fourth down and two. You trail 28-13, and the punting unit is not coming on the field. You're going to call that I believe that they have to make in this situation with 8.54 to go in the ball game. Western Kentucky has to believe they can pick up this first down. Quick kick's a possibility, but no. Smith on the keeper, and he's not going to get there. And Chris Robinson, who's had a strong game for USF, was able to get the penetration, and the ball turns over on downs. There's some of the Bulls fans who made the trip. Saw quite a few of them at the hotel last night. 8.49 to go in the game. The Bulls have the lead and the ball at Western Kentucky. Well, Jim Levitt's not the type to breathe easy, but he's got to be feeling a little bit better about things right now. Great starting position after Western Kentucky turns the ball over on downs. USF's got it at the hilltop of 41. Lindsey Lamar receives the catch. And all things considered, that's a fine open field tackle right there. Lindsey Lamar, very, very shifty. You know, sometimes, John, it's not about who controls the ball the longest or the most snaps. It's what you do with the football. And a couple big plays for South Florida can really turn statistics around. But, uh, you know, it's important ball control and field position a lot of times. And B.J. Daniels again. So quick. Cuts it inside the 30 down to the 27. And I think the Bulls are some are on to something in this formation. Yeah, they're on to something. B.J. Daniels is one heck of an athlete. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're talking about a guy that missed the bowl game last year to uh, be with the basketball team. So a guy with uh, really a lot of hops, a lot of ability. And uh, they, they showed his arm last week, too. He threw that touchdown pass, rifled that in there. So the um, you know, one thing you haven't shown tonight is the ability to throw the ball, but believe me this guy can really deliver it you know i'm glad you brought that up because that jeffrey wilson caught that touchdown pass the the play was an audible and we're in the midst of a timeout by the way by western kentucky that play was an audible by bj daniels and he threw the touchdown pass to jeffrey wilson he was only on the field for three snaps and caught a touchdown time for a break back with more in a moment usf's got the lead Bulls with the ball and a first down at the Western Kentucky 27-yard line. Just over eight minutes to go in our fourth quarter. Bulls trying to add on here if they can. Lindsey Lamar with a deep handoff. And that time, the Hilltopper defense is there waiting on him. Torrin Smith with the tackle. Yeah, I mentioned uh, before the break about the ball control. USF and Western Kentucky nearly even in time of possession. Bulls with nine more snaps, but look at the edge in total yards by USF. Yeah, we talk about two big plays, two pass plays to Carlton Mitchell, and, uh, you know, that could be the difference in the total yards or close to it. One-yard pickup for Lamar. And the Bulls keep it on the ground, trying to burn a little clock here. And there's Lindsey Lamar again. And, you know, he just kept falling forward there and added a couple more yards onto that carry. Once again, he just doesn't look like someone who weighs 160 pounds. When he was a sophomore in high school, he weighed 135 pounds on a football team. <laughs> he's an interesting guy. Like I said, he broke a couple tackles last week to score a touchdown, and he's not afraid to mix it up with the big guys. Started in Armwood and then finished his high school career at Hillsboro. Flag is start. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Third down. Nine penalties for 85 yards against the Bulls tonight. Jim Lovett's not going to like that. 
We're at L.T. Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky, just about an hour north of Nashville on Interstate 65, the campus of Western Kentucky University for college football tonight. Fifth all-time meeting between Western Kentucky and USF. I'm Dave Weekly. John Gregory has the analyst call tonight. We've had a great time, a beautiful night for college football, and so far we've been treated to a very competitive game. And Western Kentucky makes contact as they threaten the blitz. Offside, defense, number 41, five-yard penalty, third down. Torian Smith there coming in. You can see these guys pinning their ears back. And one of the things a quarterback can do is when he senses that, he can slow his count down a little bit. And he doesn't have to bark a command. If he's just silent there, those guys on defense are so edgy, they'll come across the line. Against Western Kentucky tonight, 13 penalties, 124 yards. Moses Plancher, he's got the first down and a little bit more. He's going to take it in for his second touchdown tonight. And on third down, Blanchard turns it into a 20-yard touchdown. You keep hitting it up inside like that. Eventually, that ball is going to break to the outside, and Plancher does a lot of that on his own. Is again a nice ball fake by Grothy, and it just you keep you can only take so much as a defensive front. They're going to keep pounding you. That big offensive line of theirs, and you now they're tacking some points on late in this ball game. And the extra point is up and good. 35-13. And much like last week against Wofford, the Bulls' offensive efficiency in the second half has been much, much better. They've scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. And you could see the block by Jeremiah Warren there, the big left tackle, 6'4", 3'10". See if you can see him here just opening up there. You can catch him opening up that hole. and. Get those big guys just laying on the defenders of the Hilltoppers and late in a ball game like this, these guys are starting to wear on them. Big East and SEC fans don't miss the third annual SEC Big East Invitational to be held at Madison Square Garden in New York on December the 9th and at the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa on December 10th. The two-night men's college basketball event begins with a doubleheader in New York when Georgia faces St. John's, followed by a battle between Kentucky and UConn. The following night's doubleheader in Tampa will feature DePaul and Mississippi State, followed by a basketball powerhouse showdown between Syracuse and Florida. Tickets went on sale in Tampa today. For more information, visit the official website, SEC Big East Invitational.com for more details. Well, the Bulls have gone 16 games without a 100 yard rusher, and Plancher now with two touchdowns and 96 rushing yards tonight. And beyond the 35, another strong kickoff return by Bobby Rainey. Now, well, this Bulls team, one of the things they're going to look at from a special team standpoint, this Hilltoppers have done a great job of returning kicks tonight, and uh, they're going to have to, before they get to the big, big East play, tighten that kickoff coverage some, and credit the Hilltoppers for doing a nice job. They've returned a lot of kicks tonight and given their offense plenty of field position. Last Bull to rush for over 100 yards in a game was Mike Ford against Louisville in 2007. We've been waiting to see if we would get him on the field, and now we have Ryan Giddens, the freshman from Sefner, Florida, and Armwood High School. There he is, probably one of the most heralded defensive players to ever commit to USF, is now on the field. He traveled with the team. We weren't sure if he was going to play, but he's in there right now, number seven in white. Smith on the cutback. And that's a fine run. And so Smith now goes over 100 yards rushing. You know, and that's where you find the character in your football team late in the ball game, 35-13. You got about five minutes left, and you know you wonder as a coach now you're going to start watching film and saying who's still playing out here, who's going to do, who's going to be there when things get really tough, and. Uh, 
Brandon Smith's a guy that you can put on that list as a guy that will show up and be a leader on your team. Now you saw Giddens down there ranked number four in the nation amongst weak side defensive ends. Really could have gone anywhere. Pass is tipped. Incomplete. And Keon Wilson would like to have stepped up and got a shot at that. And there's Ryan. I mean, he's got 4-5 speed as a defensive end. He had over 70 offers. And we're talking the big time. He was offered by Florida, FSU, Southern Cal, Miami, Auburn, Tennessee. Everybody wanted Ryan Giddens. And the Armwood star decided to stay in his backyard and play for USF in the Big East. Smith. And he ducks out of bounds. Boy, and you know what? When you've got George Selvey and Ryan Giddens <laughs> was just and Corey Grissom chasing you down, I'd Sabbath say. Joseph was right there as well. Discretion's the better part of valor. Yeah. Let's get this thing out of bounds. And we asked Jim Levitt who's going to get the start. He said it depends. We'll see on Thursday because these guys are still battling during practice, and you could just interchange these guys. And they have, as you mentioned, maybe a little thin last year, but they are loaded with talent at defensive end. Smith incomplete. And Jack Doyle won't drop many, but he did drop that one. Here's Keon Wilson, the senior from Jacksonville. Part of that uh, pipeline to USF from Pearl River Community College. And the coaches label him just a coach's dream, a guy that you just want to coach. His desire, his will to do whatever it takes to be a team player, and uh, that's what he was labeled, a coach's dream. Smith cranking it up again, right down the seam, pass is caught. And Vasquez pulls it in. Jim Levitt, not the kind of guy to hide his emotions. <laughs> no, he, no. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't know from that expression that he's up 35-13 with four minutes to go. But, you know, it's that type of type A personality that makes him a success. And that's what makes him a great recruiter, too. The players feel that passion. They know he's got that passion to win. Doyle. And he is bumped out of bounds by Wilson. I think with David Elson takes a look at the tape uh, of this game, he's going to be much happier than he was last week when he reviewed the loss at Tennessee. You know, John, we're talking about a team that was voted dead last in the preseason polls in the Sun Belt Conference. This is a team that did not have one single player honored in the preseason all-conference teams. A very, very young football team. And 10 of 22 starters on the field for the first time and seven first-time starters last week against Tennessee. And George Selby is able to get out there and make the stop. How many times are you going to see a defensive tackle catch a tight end after he catches a pass? But George Selby did. Timeout Western Kentucky. Now they have one more thing to add on that on how young Western Kentucky is. 57 of the 85 players on the roster are true freshmen. So this is a team that they can build on. And, you know, Coach knows that, and he knows he's got a young football team, and he's doing what he can to keep them together. And it's, it's games like this that, uh, you know, will turn these young guys into better players. Elson told us a great story last night. There you see his record the last three seasons about – how he was on Rich Rodriguez's staff at West Virginia for 28 days back in 2002. After Jack Harbaugh upset McNeese State to win the 2002 1AA National Championship, Rick Trickett, the offensive line coach at Florida State, who was then at West Virginia and who is Elson's uncle-in-law, told him about the opening on the West Virginia staff. Todd Graham was leaving the staff to join uh, Tulsa. So he went to see Rich Rodriguez, took the job, 28 days later, he was coming back to sell his house. He got a call that Jack Harbaugh had unexpectedly retired. Wood Sealy wanted to offer him the head coaching job here at Western Kentucky, and he's been here ever since. Rainey. Dropped near the 16-yard line. And Jason Pierre-Paul. When you watch this USF defense, it's amazing how well their down linemen run. Yeah, 
every one of them. You're talking about the nose tackle, the inside guys, the guys that are close to 300 pounds. All of them can move. And you need that. If you're going to play in the Big East in a, in a conference like that, you're going to have to have guys who are going to get banged up, and you need to have backups and guys that can run to the football. Pass is juggled out of bounds, and that's going to be incomplete. You know, back to that David Elson story, you talk about 28 days being in there, and what he, he was honest with Coach Rodriguez, and he walked in and he said, you know, I gotta call. I'm going back to sell my house. I haven't called anybody, but somebody mentioned something to me. I've got a feeling maybe something's going on, and Coach Rodriguez, to his credit, says, if you have an opportunity to be a head coach, then, you know, take advantage of it. Talk to somebody, and he did that, and, uh, you know, it's that's the story. Yeah, he said he went back, and he was going to sell his house, and he was staying in room 103 at the Holiday Inn, and that's where U.S. <laughs> Seth stayed on this trip. Smith, little flanker screen. And the pursuit just ran him down. Nate Allen was there, along with Craig Marshall. Catch was made by Dustin Boyer. And the ball's going to turn over on downs. So USF will have it back. You know, Western Kentucky has done a very good job in their non-conference scheduling. We talked to Doug Woolard about that briefly at halftime, the AD at USF. Western Kentucky has a four-year, two-and-two deal with UK that's going to kick in. They're going to play in Lexington twice, and then they'll play UK in Nashville twice. They've got home-and-homes coming up with Navy, Indiana, Army. B.J. Daniel. down and it's close to a horse collar call and no flag down on that kind of surprised we didn't see a horse collar call on that Quantera Smith made the stop yeah, it looks like whenever anybody's tackled that way and is that violently thrown down, it looks like they have to have a handle on something to be able to rip them down that fast. And Such a dangerous play. Coach Levitt looking up at the scoreboard there. He's trying to get a peek to see if, in fact, it was a horse collar. Yeah, Western Kentucky has burned their final timeout. So for the Bulls, again, next week they will be at home for Charleston Southern. And I think Jim Levitt, one of the, his main goals next week will be to get his team focused on Charleston Southern and, and avoid the urge to look ahead to Florida State in Tallahassee coming in two weeks. And you can see the Bulls upcoming schedule. Bulls going to play four non-conference games before they jump into Big East play. And they will start Big East play at an improved Syracuse. And then against uh, that Cincinnati game is a good game for USF. It's a Thursday night ESPN game, and they have an off week before they play that game. You're right, the value of that off week. You can't say enough about that, having that opportunity to prepare for a very good Cincinnati team is they showed against Rutgers last week. Well, Plancher with just a minimal gain there, his 17th carry. One more good carry for Moses Plancher would put him over the 100-yard mark tonight. No bull rushed for more than 85 yards last year, and it was Brophy. And that's going to do it. So the streak is over, and Moses Plancher takes it up the middle and goes over 100 yards. And there is a bull down at the 25-yard line. Slow to get up. And Mo Plancher, a perfect guy to be able to get that 100-yard, a guy that wanted this. And he's been it's been such a hard luck guy. In 06, he had a knee injury. 06 and 07, knee injury. 08 was an elbow. So, you know, a guy that's fought through injuries, you know, he's persevered and came out here, and now he's being successful in his senior season. And uh, a lot of credit goes to him for being able to stick in there and do those things, even with the injuries. Boy, and for USF fans, there's a sigh of relief as Carlton Mitchell was slow to get up. Bulls playing without Jesse Hester tonight. He did not make the trip. But Carlton Mitchell stepped up with a couple of huge plays in this game. Four catches for 130 yards. He had a 50-yard catch in the first half that led to a touchdown. And a 69-yard catch and go that led to a second-half touchdown. 
Inside of a minute to go. Fourth down and two. And the Bulls run it all the way down and take the timeout. So the Bulls have two timeouts remaining. And just wanted to run that clock all the way down as far as they could before they had to punt this football away. Well, he's frustrated now, but I think David Elson will be happy, at least happier, when he takes a look at this tape. He'll be home again next week to host Central Arkansas, then at Navy on September the 26th. It's funny when you take a look at it. Western Kentucky is playing 25% of their entire schedule against teams from Florida. They're playing USF tonight, and then they're going to see FIU and FAU once they get into Sunbelt Conference play. And, and you mentioned the recruiting, what, what that can do for 11 players off this Western Kentucky team from the state of Florida, and they'd like to get more. Rainey's going to call for a fair catch at the 41-yard line. It was interesting when he talked when we talked with coach about that uh, from a recruiting standpoint in Florida. You know the addition of Florida Atlantic in the Sun Belt Conference, Florida International. You know it's you know those players are going to those schools as well, so they've had to move a little bit further north and you know dipping into the Georgia area, Alabama to try to grab some players and stuff. But uh, still plenty of players around. I mean Florida. You talk about Florida, Texas, California, mm -hmm. and Ohio are the hotbeds for recruiting across this country. And the Bulls have a player coming on late. And that, that's going to happen late in the game when you get some substitutions into the game. Daquan Williams came onto the field late for USF, and so the Bulls are going to have to burn a timeout here. So they'll have one more timeout with 41 seconds to go. And Jim Levitt and company ready to get this one over and, and get back to the bus and get out of town with a win. And you look at him right there, you just wonder what's on his mind. He's <laughs> thinking, all right, what do we have to do for next week's ball game? And <laughs> what am I going to talk to them about in the locker room after this? Is there some positives to build on? Of course there is. It's a win. You're, you get a win on the road. I don't care who you're playing. It's important, and he'll tell you that. By the way, the attendance tonight, a very good crowd, second largest ever in this facility, 20,568, 20,568. The only other crowd here that was any bigger was the first game last year against Murray State after the stadium renovation. They had 22,297 in that game in the house. And this is a very, very comfortable facility to watch a game. Yeah, they've done a great job. As we mentioned, the locker rooms, coaches' rooms were amazing last night. And, you know, 10,000 square foot weight room, a 10,000 square foot locker room. Giddens and Butler are going to share a sack there. First sack for Giddens in his career. Smith fires. Pass is caught. And and Jack Doyle was fighting hard to try to get out of bounds and extend this game, but he's unable to do it. So this one is over. Western Kentucky, they were game. But in the second half, much like the Wofford game last week, USF's second half offensive execution was superior. They scored on three consecutive possessions, and they win tonight, go to 2-0, and oh, and defeat Western Kentucky 35-13. We'll be back with more. Hopefully we'll get a couple of comments from Jim Levitt and some of the Bulls. But we're finished here in Bowling Green, 35-13. Bulls win it over the toppers. I mean, they spread the ball around nicely. They've got a lot of speed. They've got a lot of talented players. They mix in uh, uh, different quarterbacks. They, they spread everything out, and it's, uh, it's an, a very aggressive offense, and I like it. And Grothy's just a very good, talented quarterback. And we've been wondering how USF was going to incorporate B.J. Daniels into the offense. Tonight, I think we got a little bit of a glimpse of that. We saw many opportunities tonight where Grothy split out wide, and B.J. Daniels took the direct snap. And here's Grothy. Grothy ran the ball effectively. This is some of the action from Matt Grothy in the first half. 
just his ability and his control that he has. Even when he runs out of the pocket, he has plenty of control. And you can see him here, the aggressiveness he had with an offensive lineman who had a personal foul call led to this touchdown here and a perfect throw over the top with great touch and uh, just his ability to keep a play alive and just throw it where his guy can make the play. Well, that touchdown pass to Theo Wilson, that was the second consecutive game that USF has been able to do that. And then that pass to Ben Busby, I mean, that was all growthy. Yeah. He just rolled out of the pocket, and uh, those guys know to start looking for the football because it's coming. Yeah, he's, he's an athlete. He keeps plays alive, and that's what he does, and he makes things happen for this football team, and that's why he has the success he does. All right, John, we'll take a final break. We'll come back and wrap it up in just a moment. USF, a winner tonight on the road, 35-13 over Western Kentucky. Look at those penalties against the Hilltoppers tonight. They had 13 penalties for 124 yards. John, you're just not going to be able to win many games when you do that. No, you can't make those mistakes. You're a young ball club. you got to make those. You can't make those mistakes if you expect to win. They've got to clean those things up, and they probably will. They're going to look at the film. They're going to go back there, and they'll make those mistakes. And for Matt Grothy tonight, he had very good statistical numbers. And you can see these numbers are right up to the minute where he is in the career charts for the Big East. He just keeps adding to his total offense record. He's now passed Pat White from West Virginia. And you can see he's over 85. 500 yards in passing, completions over 700 yards, and pass attempts over 1,100 yards. Those numbers so show that he's pretty good. Yeah, it shows that he's been around for a while. 40 career starts and uh, statistics show that he's a pretty darn good player. All right, so Western Kentucky going to try to get a big win here at home as they host Central Arkansas next week. USF will also be at home next week. They'll host Charleston Southern, and don't forget, in two weeks they head to Tallahassee to take on the Florida State Seminoles. Once again, our final score, USF 35, Western Kentucky 13. For John Gregory and our entire crew on Dave Weekly, for more information, log on to ESPNplus.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.